on this program is believed to be factual and up-to-date, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, and it should not be regarded as a complete analysis of the subjects discussed. Discussions and answers to questions do not involve the rendering of personalized investment advice, but are limited to the dissemination of general information. A professional advisor should be consulted before implementing any of the options presented. Encompass More Asset Management is registered as an investment advisor with the SEC and only transacts business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Registration with the SEC does not imply a certain level of skill or training. And there they are, Clinton Smith, Galen Bargerstock, in the studio with us this morning. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you both with us here today. You know, when folks go to see a financial advisor for the very first time, um, it can be rather intimidating because they figure that guy there knows more than I'll ever know about money or anything else. Yeah. And uh, so they might feel a little bit, uh, I don't know, uh, as if they're up against it uh, and, and they don't know where to start. Yeah. So what are some questions that people would ask a financial advisor who they want to help them get set for the rest of their life, really, when you're talking retirement savings. Our, our biggest number one question is, are you a fiduciary? Uh, you know, if someone's a fiduciary, you know, they have to make sure that whatever they are doing for you is better for the client and not better for the agent themselves. So if someone's a fiduciary, that really is going to be the simplest thing to find out if they are in that category of like a used car salesman or are they someone that is actually taking their client's best interest in mind. So that would be our number one question is, are you a fiduciary? Probably five or six years ago, no one would have asked that because they'd never heard that word. Never. No, no. <laughs> it's a new term. I mean, it's an old term, but people have just started talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Why did they start talking about it? All I think because, year? you know, people are, you know, fiduciaries are telling people to make sure that you're talking to another fiduciary because life insurance agents have come into the business and started selling you know, rollovers or what you want to call it, um, rolling over 401ks and not having the license of a fiduciary to actually be able to do securities just to be able to handle the life insurance and let the life insurance company handle the IRA. People would naturally then say, well, anybody can call themselves a fiduciary. What actually certifies them as one? There is an actual certification. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, you have to have testing to be done to become a fiduciary. Um, the six or the 65 in the state of Pennsylvania will have you become a fiduciary. All right. So that's a, yeah. it's a very important designation. And you are. I am correct. Yeah. You are a fiduciary. All right, Clinton, what's the question number two that most so, people ask? Question number two is pretty, uh, a really easy one. You know, uh, we were, for, it, it's no surprise, we were a prudential office for a year. Uh, and when we were there, uh, we a lot of people asked us, why did you come from where you were at to here? Because we were independent before we went to prudential. We went there to get better licenses and get more experience, uh, and that was in like 2014. And the thing that Prudential and large companies like that do is whenever they bring in new people, they like to have them sell everyone in their family, all of their friends and everyone like that, and then hope that they end up surviving. So a really good question is, what kind of experience do you have? Do you know what I mean? Just because your nephew, niece, uncle, friend, or someone just decided that they wanted to get into this business doesn't mean that they have the experience that someone or that we have that we've been in it for over 10 years. So the second question would be how much experience do you have? Because yeah. that's really important to understand. You know, a plumber may have went to plumber school, but they're probably going to be better after 10 years than they're on their first day of work. Yeah. And Gaitlin, of course, you're asking that question because you want to know the quality of the experience in addition to you know, okay, at first, uh, Uncle Joe and, and Aunt Sue and, and my na next door neighbor's grandmother, yeah. uh, you know, those are the ones that uh, I said, hey, I've got a new job doing this, and uh, would you help me get started? Uh, but it's the quality. It's the people that you have served. Correct. Yeah, it's a trust factor. I mean, family and friends, you know, why they're telling you to talk to your family and friends is, one, because you're going to be more comfortable at the beginning of your career talking to your family and friends about this stuff. And two, your family and friends are going to trust you more than they're going to trust a stranger. Um, so it builds confidence. But, you know, like Clinton said, you can't just, I'm here, um, I'm a financial advisor, use my services. I mean, you have to prove yourself in this business. Um, even, you know, when I'm taking on, you know, a new agent, 
Um, my newest agent, he has a degree in finance. So he does have experience um, of financial things, but he doesn't have the real world experience. So he's with me for, you know, six months, you know, learning and I'm monitoring and checking to, you know, make sure he's doing everything properly. But at the end of the day, I learned best by the questions I was asked. And, you know, I've been licensed since 2007. So over time, you know, you learn things. So experience says a lot. Yeah. 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 That quality of experience is, is really, really important. Clinton, question number three. Number three. I feel like I'm interviewing you today a little bit. The tables have turned this Monday. Uh, question number three is really about, um, you know, the with the retirement plan that you're suggesting, how much am I going to make monthly in retirement, and what is that going to cost me? Mm-hmm. That's another important question, and that's pretty sum, much sums up what a lot of people's questions are. They want to know how much are they going to make monthly, where is their money going to come from, how long is it going to last them, but also, more importantly, how much is that going to cost me? Am I going to have to pay anything? for the products or services that you're suggesting. All right. So Galen, question number three had a whole lot of different angles to it. Yeah. You know, how are you going to get paid? I mean, um, I get asked that a tons of times. Um, a lot of the times, you know, my just style is to try to keep the fees as low as possible. So I figure out the risk tolerance and then decide what portion could I push to the insurance side of the business. And in the insurance side of the business, like right now today, a lot of my favorite companies have absolutely no fees. You know, you're going into a contract with them for maybe 10 years, and there's stipulations. Like, you can only pull out 10% a year for 10 years. Mm -hmm. If you're okay with that, um, that is an annuity, and a lot of annuity companies have fee-less products, so you're not going to pay a fee for that at all because they're holding your money. And then on our aspect, you go with our fees, and the more money that's held, the less the fee is with us. So I'm very upfront about how much it's going to cost when you go in Mm -hmm. so we don't have an awkward conversation a year or two down the road when you're like, where did this come from? You know, is it a big mistake for someone to say, okay, here's, here's the amount of money. Here's, here's this pile of money over here. Mm-hmm. If I take this much out every month, uh, this is going to last me 10 years. This, if I take this so much, it's going to last me 15 years. Um, and, and so, um, at the end of those 15 years, <gasps> I'm out. I've, I've got no other recourse. Well, and that kind of goes into personal preference. If you're going into a fixed annuity, and let's just say for a number, just a number, I'm not saying anything specific, but let's say you get a 5% guaranteed rate of return for 10 years, Mm -hmm. which is possible. Um, You know that if you have $100,000 and take out 5% a year in 10 years, you're still going to have $100,000 because you pulled that 5% interest. So it really depends on the product you go into because if you get a guaranteed wrapped in, you know you're going to have a certain dollar amount at the end. But if you're just riding the market, you could have more or less depending on how the world turns. Yeah. All right. So there are a lot of different factors, a lot of different angles with which to attack question number three. When Galen sits down, he does go over all of this stuff with them Mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that they do understand the fees and everything like that. But uh, just because something has a fee doesn't mean that it's worse than something else, too, either. A lot of things that come with fees are managed a little bit more closely. Um, let's see, question number three. I had it in my mind a second ago. Um, how do you measure success for your clients? This is an important one, um, and it really helps Galen determine or people determine what their agent is there for. Well, it's question number four, actually. Yeah, question number four. All right. So, yeah. So, Galen, what's the answer to that one? How do you? I, my success is your success. So, so whatever you're looking to accomplish, that's what I'm looking to make happen for you. And that's a success for me because, you know, I've said it many, many times, everybody's different. Everybody's family's different. Mm -hmm. So your, what's successful for you might not be successful for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I'm just looking to make you happy and accomplish your goals. For a lot of people, they'll enter into their retirement years thinking, uh, okay, uh, this is my retirement pie. And, and I'll take my piece out year by year, and, and that's fine. But then those goals change. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, somebody who's been content to live here uh, in the uh, year round uh, for all of their working lives uh, says after a couple of years of retirement, you know, why am I sticking around here in January? Uh, I want to go down south, and I want to live down south for part of the year and mm-hmm. then come back up here. So those goals change. Their costs change. Uh, and and so their plan has to change and adapt to it, does it not? Correct. Yeah. I mean, it depends on if you're looking to move down south and buy or rent because maybe you own up here and then you're selling your home and you're making a great profit down here and the rent's reasonable down there. So, you know, it, it could be a trade off every situation again. But, you know, also take into consideration you're retired and what happens if your parents die? 
and now you have an inheritance come in. So it's not always you know a horrible situation that I'm talking about right now, mm -hmm. but that's going to leave more money and more assets in your pocket as well. So it doesn't always have to be doom or gloom for you. There could be more money coming in for retirement, not less. Circumstances change, mm -hmm. uh, and and therefore uh, you have to be adaptable and and reactive to those circumstances. Yeah. All right, we have time for one more question. Nice. Question this is number five. What what will you be able to do for me? You know, we've ran into a lot of people who have met with people who never see them again, who they bought a product off of a long time ago. The person's not in the industry anymore, or even people. I mean, if you're in your 30s and your financial advisor is in their 70s, you should expect that they're going to be retired before you retire. Mm -hmm. So that's another question is what exactly you would be able to do for me? What does our relationship look like after this first meeting? Yeah, that's kind of interesting because, uh, you know, you think about it. Uh, people have a dentist. They have a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and when they're a young person, uh, their doctor is 10 or 15 or 20 years older than them. At some point in their life, that doctor's going to retire before they do, and they'll have to look for a doctor or a dentist or whoever it is who's younger than them, who brings a whole different perspective uh, to to the whole equation. And and so that it works that way in financial markets, too. It does. It does. I mean, 10 years ago, I knew when I was sitting down with people sometimes that they liked me because I was younger, and they thought that I would be around for their entire lives. Mm -hmm. And then the older I get, you know, yes, I have more and more knowledge, but, you know, at the end of the day, a person wants to talk to somebody or at least an office, you know, knowing that you have a contingent plan if something happens to you that they're taken care of for the rest of their lives and plans don't change. So, you know, we have all of that set up in place. And, you know, I think I have quite a few years left in me, you know, hopefully. At least 20, <laughs> 25 maybe if I can get that. <laughs> But that that's a that's a, a great reassurance for folks, yeah, uh, and yeah. and and they want to know that whoever it is that they're with is going to be there for them for yeah. the long term. Yeah, yeah. I, I was shocked yeah. a couple times when it didn't start happening until probably like five or six years ago. But people are asking me now what happens if you pass away. So you know, before when I was younger, <laughs> they didn't ask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do, do you know something I don't know? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I looked in the mirror this morning. It didn't look that bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, things have definitely changed since we started the company. Now uh, we look like we're in our 40s rather than being in our 40s. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. it's all right. That's okay. It's okay. It's a part of the whole process. Uh, yeah. uh, but they do need to know that the company is going to be there for them. Yeah. Uh, and you guys are. You're going to yeah. be there for the long term. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much. This I, is weird. I, me interviewing you, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, you were just bouncing the questions off of me, and they, <laughs> right. were, they were bouncing off of me and landing on Galen yeah. over there. But that's okay. I'll have to get a, get an application while I'm here. Uh, okay. Well, you're, <laughs> you're you're coming back later this week, <laughs> right? Yeah. This I'm is, sure. This is one of those weeks when we have a bunch of guests who are here early in the week who are going to be coming back later in the week, and you're one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're coming back for the United Way of Indiana County on Wednesday. Yeah. Tons of exciting stuff going on with the United Way right now. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. So all of that being the case, what do folks need to know about GCS and how they can get started with you guys and uh, and, and get rolling on their retirement plans? Uh, the most important thing to know is that yesterday was our marketing director, Shauna Jones's 41st birthday. Shauna. Happy so birthday in a day. Happy birthday. If you guys Shana. see Shauna today, tell her happy birthday. She turned 41. Uh, it's awesome to work with her. She's a great marketing director. She does a great job. She comes up with all our billboards that you see on Philadelphia Street at 1780 Philadelphia Street. That's our address. Stop in to see us or visit us online at gces.us. Beautiful. Beautiful. Hey, guys, thanks so much for the visit. This Thank was you so a, much. a great way Thank to you. approach it today. Yeah. I like that. Good Monday morning. It's Indiana yeah. in the morning, and it's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com, just about 825 in the morning. And Boomer Sports next, and then it is Jake in our WCCS newsroom. This is Boomer and Science with the Sports Minute. Unranked Arkansas toppled number four Tennessee Saturday, but the shocker of all shockers was Vanderbilt, which had been 0 for 60 against top five teams, stunning number one Alabama. So kudos to the Vandy scoreboard crew for playing Nick Saban's recent quote, the only place you're going to play in the SEC that's not hard to play is Vanderbilt. I'm Boomer Esiason.
All right, when it comes to getting life insurance for your family, a lot of excuses can get in the way. But ask yourself this. If something were to happen to me, who would pay the mortgage, the kids' education, and the other bills? Then forget the excuses and check out Ethos Life, the online easy way to get life insurance in 10 minutes. Ethos has rates that you can afford, like a $500,000 policy for a 40-year-old male starting at $1 a day or $30 a month with a few health questions and no medical exam. Get your free quote right now at checkethos.com. That's checkethos.com. Not available in all states. Rates do vary. Autumn is in the air, and like the leaves, prices are falling at Harbor Freight's parking lot sale this weekend. We've got tons of products on sale, like three-ton jacks for under 100 bucks, 5,000-watt generators, $250 off, plus dual bevel miter saws at nearly half the price of the competition. Whatever.